the article can literally say, we found no evidence that such and such has any cause or effect on cancer. And that is linked to, because it's within the same article. So I told you yesterday that I thought we were going to disagree, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to like uh, LDL and all that. I don't know. The, the research seems kind of weird. And yeah. Wonky. We'll def we're definitely going to get into that. Um, yeah. Well, we can... Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to fats. And yeah. What people don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but um, we'll start, we'll start with keto. I mean, you you love going hard on that and i love watching you and listening to you go go in yeah on so welcome guys this is episode six now um so we are going to talk about fats and as nick alluded to we're probably gonna we, we thought we we're gonna have like an argument little point counterpoint but um i feel like fats is one of those things people have a large misconception on um and so, yeah, like we're going to, we're going to dive into it. And so fats is going to include like cholesterol and heart health and things like that. Um, but yeah, so um, if you're new, if this is your first time listening, check out our other episodes, like subscribe, there's buttons and things. I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not good at this thing. There, there's a bunch but of buttons. You know, yeah, hit, hit the buttons, them. <laughs> comment, you know, do whatever you can leave a Share review. text message, send us uh, like yeah. more code or something. Yeah. Like. Tell, light a fire signal. Tell your friends. It's good. Um, so yeah, keto. Um, I think this is kind of our trend because it's the, the, between the keto and veganism, it's the longest running trends in, in diet and it's our, our myth. Um, so I, uh, I actually use a term and I'm, I'm, I don't think I coined this term, but I use it a lot for people that are zealous keto followers. I call them ketards and it's probably not PC, but <laughs> I, uh, I also have like a, an opinion on, on how words get turned into, you know, bad yeah, words. I don't, yeah. I don't really think that exists. I think that's something that people make up and you put power in the words that we use. Um, so for example, the term idiot used to be a medical diagnosis and then people were like, Oh, well, I'm going to call everybody an idiot. And then they, they said, well, we can't call that a medical thing anymore. And that's how well, words evolve. So that's like, I mean, a, a great example so along the lines of idiot is the word retard came from mental retardation and then well, retard is italian for to slow down to be oh. slow yeah so like in, in music retardando means to slow the music down uh tempo so right. like that it means to be slow or to slow down so yeah. it's it, it, that i mean it became a medical diagnosis and then people are like well i'm gonna call anybody i think is stupid or retard yeah, it's and, like you get a bunch of assholes together who want to use a, a a technical term aggressively, right? And now you know, we can't use it. Yeah, and now it's now it's an insult. And yeah. so, yeah. But that's if there's a word for for somebody being medically slow, stupid, handicapped, whatever you want to call it, it will be turned into an insult. Like you're always going to lose that word in favor of another word just because that's how the world works. People are assholes, like Nick said, myself included. I'm not. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Um, so, um, yeah, so keto, the first thing I want to say is that keto works, and this might shock a lot of people, um, by you lose weight when you eat less calories than you burn. Um, so it is calories in, calories out. Keto is just another way of getting there. There's no magic. There's no, you know, super fat burning mode. There's no, you know, people think keto is this super magical thing. Um, but you can absolutely gain weight on keto. Um, first and foremost, most of the weight, like people start keto and they lose 20 pounds in, in a month or whatever, uh, like 80% of that's water weight. Um, carbohydrates, the name carbohydrate comes from carbon and hydro and water, high carbohydrate. So you are, you take in several grams or molecules of water per gram of carbohydrate. It, it bounds with glycogen in the muscle. So you deflate, you lose weight, you drop water weight. It's also why people who work out and do keto look, they don't look as muscular. They look more flat or like lean per se, but it's because you don't have that water swelling in the muscle. So you are losing weight. You're not losing fat, which is what you want to lose when you lose weight. Um, but yeah, so there's no magic behind keto. It is calories in calories out. 
Um, you just and, happen to eat fat and fiber is the like and protein, which all fill you up a lot is is the main components of a, keto, a good keto diet if you're actually following it appropriately. Yeah, and another another huge aspect of keto, why I mean, outside of the weight, people do lose a lot of weight with keto, and that's that's partially because when you're cutting out carbohydrates, you're cutting out a lot a lot of processing in food mm-hmm. because things are stacked with sugar. Uh, and then when you cut that sugar out, your insul- your uh, blood sugar and insulin aren't spiking and crashing and spiking and crashing. So you're gonna have you're gonna be fuller more consistently and be able to respond to your hunger cues better just because you're not you're not fucking them up. I think the same can be said though for if you cut out sugar and processed and replaced it with fruit and mm-hmm. you know fresh baked bread as opposed to processed sliced yeah. white bread and that kind of, I mean, so like, I, I don't think it's a, it's a keto thing. I think it's a, a just change to a better food quality because keto can and typically is very unhealthy because a lot of people think they can just eat bacon, cheese and steak every day, but really good keto is um, high fiber. You focus on a lot of like avocados and leafy green vegetables and berries and things that like it, when people create a fear of fruit, that's a problem. Um, I don't love bananas and oranges. I mean, I like them fine, but they are very sugary. They're great for pre-exercise and things like that. But as far as being healthy, that's not the first fruit I point to consider like more so like a berry or an apple or things like that, um, that have a good amount more fiber to them and water content and things like that. Um, but yeah, so I think that, uh, I think that's a good point that, you know, it's, if you're eating it properly, it is helping you with your hunger cues and, and, you know, insulin sensitivity and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of, um, because I'm rather new with nutrition, just kind of looking around at the various diets out there and which ones work consistently, why they work consistently. And it it all comes down to you make a little bit better food decisions with less processing, more whole foods. You're not, you're not consuming all of the stuff that's going to throw you off, like things packed with um, refined sugar and all of that. So, I just noticed that I'm Tony in the bottom corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm Tony <laughs> yeah, so today. Fellas. legally changed yeah. his name to Tony. Yeah. I went with another androgynous male, female name just cause I thought it would be fun. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, uh, And so keto, a lot of people, I mean, I think dietitians know this, but keto was originally developed and founded as a management for epilepsy and and specifically epilepsy that didn't have medication. Um, They found that this like switch to ketone bodies, you know, reduced or eliminated seizures in this, you know, in certain cases of epilepsy. So that's where it's what it's for. You know, I think it's, it's good for people who um, have really bad insulin sensitivity, um, gluten. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't believe in gluten sensitivity. There's non wheat or non gluten wheat sensitivities that exist, but there's no such thing as a gluten intolerance. Like gluten is a protein and actually it's gliadin part of gluten that you're allergic to when you have celiac disease. Typically you don't have intolerances to proteins. You have into- you have allergies to proteins. So I don't believe in gluten sensitivity. I believe that you can have wheat sensitivities, but I also think that, um, and we can dive into this more, but typically it's just gluttony is why people have sensitivities to gluten per se. Um, but yeah, so keto has purposes. I think it's kind of gotten overhyped as this super magical diet that is the cure all for everything. Um, in defense of keto, when people say that it's not sustainable, it absolutely is. Um, despite what people believe, your body does not necessarily need carbohydrates. There's only one cell in the body that absolutely requires carbohydrates to survive, and that's red blood cells. And they, you can get those carbohydrates through, one, the minimal amount of carbs you do eat with keto, but also um, what's called gluconeogenesis, or the creation of carbohydrate from either amino acids or the glycerol backbone, which we'll, we'll dive into in just a minute when we start talking about fats. But, um, and that's an on-demand process. Your body will make those carbs as needed with those molecules. So it's not like it's just rampantly turning protein into carbs because you don't have any. Um, but the brain actually seems to thrive on ketones. A lot of people get mental clarity from ketone bodies and keto diet. Um, 
you know, but it's gotten so big that we're seeing like exogenous ketone supplements where it's like the point of ketone is it, like the point of the diet is to have your body transfer to ketones, not to just start taking it as a supplement. I don't know if that does anything, you know? So, um, the only yeah. time I've heard using those and it had a like with a, with a purpose was, um, somebody was using it when they get the keto flu, they use it for that first mm -hmm. week just to get through it. Electrolytes um, help with that too. Typically yeah. keto flu is an electrolyte deficiency. Yeah. Um, the problem so I've you, had, Check Sorry. out the hydration episode if you're yes. wanting to know more about electrolytes. Yeah. Um, the problem I've had with the the ketone salts is just like so many other supplements, they give you diarrhea. Yeah. Like you take it later on that day, you're shitting your brains out. We'll have a supplement episode too because I want to yeah. dive into like what supplements are actually effective, and mm -hmm. it's not very many. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, I yeah. Do, I, well, I mean, and also like from an athlete standpoint nobody should be doing oh you froze yeah okay there we okay. go um from from an athletic standpoint like carbohydrates while i will argue are not necessarily essential are essential for peak performance so if you are an athlete there i mean other than even endurance like when you talk about marathons the people that win marathons are running like four to six minute miles for the entire marathon so that is using carbohydrates. You need carbohydrates for peak power, performance, speed, things like that. So there's really, I mean, certain at like, like a long snapper in the NFL might be able to get away with doing keto because he doesn't take a lot of snaps. He's only in on special teams and you know, he doesn't, he, he has enough um, creatine and, and ATP stored to perform those activities. But you know, it's absolutely one of those things where like, if you are operating at a high level, if you need power performance, blah, 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 you need carbs, like keto is not for you. So, yeah. And also too, like, I want to specify, um, just because your body can make it, so your body can make sugars and it can make what it needs for the average person. Like that also doesn't mean you should cut out all carbohydrates. Cause if we want to look at that, your body can make all but three of the fats you need it can make all but 20 of the amino acids you need so like your body is adapted to be able to do these things when you don't have them so the reason why i bring that up is there's this huge uh argument with keto that's pro keto it's like well your body can make all the sugar it needs yes but your body can make most of the things that it needs yeah so i mean yeah. Except calories. We can't. Well, except for calories. Like you can't, you can't create energy. Um, um, but yeah, so let's, let's, uh, let's move into fat. I think that's, especially since you brought up, you know, that your body can make a lot of the fats you need, but, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the important thing on that too, is your body makes it out of the fats you provide it or out of the, you know, aminos you provide it. So you need, it needs the, you know, building blocks to create it. Um, you know, so cutting out fats would not allow your body to make those fats because then you don't have the building blocks necessary to uh, to build it. So, sure. so that's that that's definitely like a flaw in what I know so far. Uh, my assumption was it could just piece together from all the food that you need. What? Right. That's you know, what I'm saying. Is oh, you, okay. have to, you have to eat food. You have to provide. So, like, your body can make omegas nine through whatever. Mm -hmm but you have to eat omega threes and sixes okay. for it to make that, you know? Gotcha. So like it, you, you have to have the building blocks for it to get there. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it, it's not like, um, so because I mean, fats are a lot of carbon oxygen, things like that. It couldn't create that from carbohydrates. I don't believe so. No. Okay. I mean, so, so learn multiple things. Every your, day. Yeah. Your body will convert to a saturated fat and a triglyceride, but you like, you can't make omega threes without at all, you know, but so eating omega threes allows you to make omega sixes and nines because it's fewer. Um, and then, so this is something we'll get into. So, so just let's even like dial it back a little bit. Um, We're getting real. You, you, you have there. So the main types of fats are saturated, unsaturated and trans trans fats have almost disappeared because um, they were, somewhat accurately seen as nothing but bad. There are trans fats that are actually good for the body that are naturally occurring. Um, people try not to believe that, but there is, I've, I've seen one, it's a, it occurs in cheese. 
um, which has shown to decrease the risk of type 2 diabetes development. Um, so that's already going to flip a script for a lot of people, but oh. dig into it. There is a trans fat that um, it's like trans palmitol, I think is what it is. I don't, I haven't looked it up in a while, but I remember bringing that up, but yeah, there is a trans fat that actually has positive health benefits. So take that trans fat haters, okay. um, but don't eat trans fats. Um, yeah, trans fats are pretty much illegal in the United States as yeah. long as you have less than half a gram per serving. So look but, at um, the food label. So, saturated unsaturated blah blah like we're not going to dive too deep into this but the it's it's a chemical term um so basically one one is saturated with hydrogen so that means it's only single bonds across it and then unsaturated means it has at least one double bond so the carbons are not saturated with hydrogen they're double bound to each other at least one point in the chain um and then the difference between trans and sat and so trans fat is actually an unsaturated fat but it has a the configuration at the double bond is different so instead of cis it's trans so it's very like technical it's really hard to even like explain it just in words it's one of those things where it really needs to be like drawn and explained to you but so all these technical terms basically um what the prevailing theory is is that unsaturated is the best for you uh, specifically poly or i mean it should be mostly monounsaturated with its the right balance of polyunsaturated and then trans fats are, are no-nos and saturated fats should be limited um i am going to refute that theory um i i think it's a good rule of thumb but i also think that a lot of what we believe is based on uh, misinformation and food politics so yeah, and uh, to kind of put the saturated, unsaturated, and trans in uh, less technical and chemical terms, your saturated fat is going to be your solid fat, so your butter, your ghee. Solid room temperature, yeah. Yeah, when it's at, if you set it out on your counter, your butter is going to be solid. Unsaturated fat, it's going to be like olive oil, all of those things that when you set it on your counter, it's going to be a liquid, it's going to flow nice and easily. And trans fats are those vegetable oils that have been turned into a solid, basically like your margarine and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then so also just general rule of thumb, saturated fats come from animal sources um, with the exception of tropical oils. So like palm and coconut. I mean, I, as much as people love coconut, it's a, it's a saturated fat. You know, so how can you say saturated fats are bad, but then coconut gets all these super health benefits and how great it is, I found um, it. you know, so, you know, but it's it, it, blanket statements are bad is kind of what I'm trying to get, get at is that, you know, it's not just saturated, bad, unsaturated, good. Um, there's actually a point where a while back they a study found that people were overeating polyunsaturated fats. Uh, so that would be like your omega threes. Um, and so there was an offset balance and they were finding that in some of these people, some of the like clogged artery fat was polyunsaturated because their, their balance was offset. So that it, it basically eating anything in excess is not good, you know, like just, and that's the problem is people hear that something's healthy or is no longer unhealthy and they go ham on it. Um, you know, so it seems like we've said this multiple times, but balance is a good thing. It's like, <laughs> Moderation is key. Yeah, but everybody's tired enough, of like, yeah, try to be balanced about things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, that's a symptom of the human condition is like, we know there's a lot of unhealthy things that we're eating all the time. We're just coming in contact with. And so when you find something like, Oh my God, these are healthy fats. You need more omega threes. And now we're all down in omega threes and having issues with that. So yeah. Um, so I feel like this is a good time to dive into what we thought we would be arguing about, which is, I don't think saturated fats are as bad for you as they're made out to be. Um, I think a lot of it's based on, so very much so the whole saturated fat and heart disease attachment is based on the Ansel Keys study, which, um, a lot of people in nutrition are aware of and its fallacies, but a lot of people just take it to heart and don't dive into it. But so basically this guy, Ansel Keys, years and years ago, wanted to show that saturated fat caused heart disease. And he found six different countries that had high saturated fat intake 
and also showed high prevalence of heart disease. Um, and then there were about 16 countries he omitted that did not fit his trend. Um, for instance, Japan tends to have a good amount of uh, cholesterol and saturated fat intake. They're very beef and, and sh uh, shrimp, actually, a heavy country, shellfish. Um, but Japan has very low incidence of heart disease. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, of, of countries he omitted to make sure his data, and that's called cherry picking. It's something that we, you know, mentioned briefly in our um, research episode, but you know, he, he didn't include the data that didn't fit his findings, which is bad science, you know, it's, and so now there's a lot of information based on this garbage study that shows that saturated fat is bad. And then you have the sugar industry um, who jumps on board and they've done a lot of lobbying and a lot of, um, you know, research to push the fat is bad. And that's where you get the 80s fat scare. And, you know, sugar is good, um, especially if it's natural sugar. Um, you know, which a sugar is sugar is sugar. You know, I, I ask like, agave, honey, it's all the same thing. There might be mild health benefits to having honey, especially if it's local as far as like allergens and pollen and that kind of stuff. But honey is sugar. Um, so it's actually fructose. It's mostly, it's, it's honey is, is more similar to high fructose corn syrup than it is to table sugar. Um, you know, so it's very difficult to just say like, oh yeah, saturated fat bad for you when the studies aren't there. And the more recent studies, which we'll dive into in just a second, have not agreed with that statement. Yeah. Um, and actually the, um, because of that Ansel Keys study and, the uh, sugar industry pushing more bad science. That's kind of where, like we said, we thought this would kind of be a little bit of a debate slash argument episode. But when I was going through the studies that I was finding for this episode, there, there seemed to be their claims on things like blood cholesterol, which we'll get into, and heart disease. They either stated it without backing it up with a reference, which if it's common knowledge, you don't have to, but we also know that that common knowledge could be based off of a lot of bogusness. Or if they did reference a study, it was something from the 90s, which was when all those issues were going on. So that's really what turned this into from a, this is probably going to be a debate slash disagreement to this. The water's really cloudy when it comes to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so the two big things I found were, um, a meta-analysis was published, uh, from 21 studies and it, it had about 348,000 adults. And what they found was there was no difference in the risk of heart disease and stroke between people with the lowest and highest intakes of saturated fat. And that goes in line with when you look it up and, and it says like, Things it says things like um, saturated fat may increase the risk factors of heart disease, but not heart disease itself. And that's one of those things where it says may. May is a big part of that statement. It doesn't say will or does, it says may. Um, and then I've also seen it where it's like may increase LDL, may increase this, may increase that. You know, so you have to take it's like when something says that like um, such and such was linked to cancer. Link to can mean it was mentioned in the same article. The article can literally say, we found no evidence that such and such has any cause or effect on cancer. And that is linked to because it's within the same article. They, they studied X and they found Y, X is linked to Y. Or they studied X and didn't find Y, it's still linked to it. You know, so that's, it's, there's a lot of tricky words they use for sensationalism in journals, which is why, not journals, but news which is why you need to find the journals, the articles themselves and find out what the information is because may is a very, you know, like driving my car home may result in an accident. You know, that doesn't mean I'm going to get in one flying somewhere may result in a crash. You know, it's very unlikely, but it is possible. That's may that's, I mean, that's the power of that word. So. Yeah. And so if for anybody just to get a little bit of a laugh if you're watching the, the video recording of this, when something says that this may cause that, it's basically the scientific community going, yeah, 
don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. the the it's, the it's old, possible. Yeah. Yeah. The the elder man who's like, I guess I'll just die. Meme. Like. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I um and then the other one was um. And we kind of alluded to this earlier is so saturated fat intake has to be evaluated in context by what it's being replaced with, you know, so if you were replacing it with um, refined and, and processed carbohydrates, they actually have seen either no difference or an increase in obesity and triglycerides and LDL particles and things like that. Um, you know, so it's, if you're replacing it with fruits and, um, you know, olive oil and things like that, you'll probably see changes in health, you know, but I also think that one part of the equation, like Ansel Keys omitting the, the um, countries he didn't like, he also didn't look at a lot of other factors like overeating. Um, Western cultures, especially America, overeats far more than most other cultures in the world. England is up there. I think we kind of have been going back and forth with obesity per capita with England for a while. They were fatter than us for a little while. And I think we were back in first. Um, you know, but like <laughs> the little arm overeating, you did there. Overeating me. means you're overeating calories and saturated, you know, so overeating saturated fat and calories, you can't say that the saturated fat causes these health problems. Um, you know, so, and, and actually one of my favorite things to bring up is, and this fits into fats, is the uh, Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is not what's better for you. As a matter of fact, what they found was as Western culture started creeping throughout the world, there was an increase in obesity in a lot of these places. It's the way that the Mediterraneans eat, which is they have a small breakfast, you know, they go, they work, they have a big break where they go home and eat for like two hours, they have lunch with their families. You know, their restaurants are, are often not even open, except for in the more touristy parts of um, the Mediterranean, like Italy and, and Greece, because they go home and they eat with their family. You know, then they go back to work and they work till nine or so at night. And then they go home and have a nice dinner with their family. You know, they take a nap at lunch. So they, the way they eat and their culture surrounding food is more balanced. And it's focused on family time and, and mental health as much as it is. They're not scarfing, you know, a 12 inch sub or a McDonald's uh, value meal in their car or at their desk while they're still working, you know, so that has a lot to do with it. It's the style of eating more than the particulars of what they're eating. Now, I'm not saying that fish and olive oil, but like, Italy has, a, and, and Greece, they both eat a good amount of beef and red meat. You know, like, what do you think gyro meat is? You know, it's, it's lamb, it's cow, it's a mixture, you know, so like they eat beef and steak. Like Italians eat steak. There's a lot of cattle there. So red meat is not the problem. It's the amount of red meat or the way in which we're eating it and we're surrounding ourselves with it. Um, you know, so it's our style of eating that's a bigger problem than the fats themselves, in my opinion. Yeah, I want to go back to also when you mentioned just overeating the competition between us and uh, England, the UK, Britain, which whatever the name is. Um, but so I've kind of wondered that for a while. If so, like chronic overfeeding, there's a certain limit to the rate that your body can store fat, correct? I don't believe so. I think okay. like the whole like protein and, and fat per feeding and that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> um, so the, the way that um, fat is transported through cells is uh, carnitine, I believe is the name of the amino acid. Um, it is not the limiting factor. The body will upregulate it as needed. It's the actual amount of fat that's there okay. to be transported. Um, I mean, I think... I, I, your body is incredibly efficient at storing energy. So basically, um, so fat cells are, are the only cells or one of the only cells in the body that are what's called hyperplastic, which means that we create more of them um, a, a, on demand. So like muscle, you have the certain number of muscle cells, you can increase muscle fibers, you can increase muscle size, that's called um, uh, hypertrophy. So hyperplasia, hyperplasticity is creating more cells. So, so fat cells will multiply. They will never reduce. The only way to get fat cells out of the body is liposuction, I believe, actual physical removal. Um, so they will shrink down to nothing and have nothing in them, but they will still just be an empty capsule. 
but fat is being stored as a survival mechanism. And typically it was, you put on fat for the winter when you weren't, there was not farming, there was not um, as much animal and cattle and that kind of stuff. You know, so you had your stores, but you also had your stores to make sure that you had enough energy on hand. Um, you know, so the body's incredibly efficient at putting on weight. I mean, yeah. some people have a harder problem with it, uh, which I, we're, they're called hard gainers. We can talk about that in a different episode. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and that usually comes down to some sort of hormonal regulation. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff has been offset because of, I mean, hormones change and evolve over time based on how society works. And, um, you know, some people are just wired incorrectly. I mean, that it happens. So, gotcha. um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think that there's, I, if there is a limit, I mean, it, just take a look around the Mall of America. It's, we're hard pressed to find what that limit is because people are putting it on at a, a, a surprising rate. Yeah, um, the which what led me to that question was wondering if it was more which it, it's likely not this, but if you were kind of consuming consistently and then over time, if you were overfeeding consistently and then over time things get backed up and then your bloodstream gets backed up. But like it seems like that's not the case. That was um, just one of those. I mean, yeah, I do think in the dark. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it can occur, but so like, I mean, cause so you, you there, obviously that has to happen to some degree, the rate at which you're eating and the rate at which it's going into the cell, because where, how, why else would it just be sitting? And it's called mm -hmm. sludge blood as your triglycerides start to go up. Um, I know that's not a super medical term, but that's what we refer to it as because your blood actually slows down. It moves slower. Um, but so, um, yeah, I just, I feel like your body's pretty good, at, especially with like um, blood sugar and getting it out. I mean, cause it's toxic. It's, I mean, too high of blood sugar. is very toxic very quickly. Um, and I, I didn't even think about it with that. So it would start showing up in your kidneys before it. Like I'd show it, up all it, over. I mean, yeah, I mean, it'd be kidney yeah. disease, it'd be blood triglycerides, you know? Um, but I think that lends to uh, but I, I think the issue is like, and sometimes it's just genetic. Um, my sister's husband is in impeccable shape. Uh, he works out all the time. He doesn't, um, he doesn't even use flavored protein powder. Like when he buys protein powder, he gets unflavored, like unadulterated, uh, un uh, unadulterated protein. But so he has uh, offset, um, you know, blood panel, lipid panel. Um, he's always wrestled with being on a statin and having, um, offset like cholesterol and, and lipoprotein profiles. And, you know, it's sometimes it doesn't matter how hard you try what you do. His diet's great. He works out all the time and it's still off. So, you know, it, it, with working out all the time and his diet being on point, that kind of seems like his baseline. Would that really put him at risk for things like heart disease? don't know I, I, there's I mean, the, yeah, there's so, a, it may um, <laughs> like it so may it may not unfortunately the first often the first symptom of heart disease is death it's called the silent killer <laughs> because you don't i mean it's yeah. not like oh my heart hurts i feel tired blah blah, blah. Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of like outward signs there's risk factors and um you know to get personal with you my uh dad's girlfriend of 11 years died unexpectedly of heart failure and it was one of, she just, I mean, she said she felt tired the night before and then just never woke up the next day. But Damn. when you looked at it ex post facto, she was slightly overweight. She had a high stress job. She was over 55. She, um, she hadn't been to the doctor in 10 years. She smoked, you know, so there was a lot of things that added up to being risk factors and, and pointing her in that direction. But it was, there was nothing showing you know, in her day-to-day -day life that, oh, maybe her heart's failing, you know, and that it, it's, it's very true that like, it, you might be fine. You know, Ray might live to a hundred years old because of how well he takes care of himself. Whereas, you know, someone else who is seemingly the same person in the same situation might die tomorrow, you know? So it's, it's really hard to tell whether the risk factors result in heart failure or just like they they're explained their factors their risk factors mm -hmm. you know it doesn't it's not a guarantee but the more you have the higher at risk you are yeah um, man that's that's rough but yeah those that's the question is were they just factors that happen to be there or were they causal kind of thing man. yeah 
And so I, I think this leads in well to you've been interested in, and I've alluded to it a couple of times, my, my take on cholesterol. Um, Can I put so, a pause oh, yeah. on that real quick? I do have, uh, you mentioned the difference between like butter and coconut oil and they're both saturated yeah, yeah, fats. Yeah, go ahead. That's actually um, the first study I found was looking at butter versus substitute with coconut oil or substituted with olive oil. And even though coconut oil and butter are both high in saturated fats, the coconut oil did have a different effect on the blood lipids. So did they say what type of butter was used? Um, shit, now I gotta go up to the methods. Um, <laughs> let's see. Unsalted butter. See, but I don't think all butters are made equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, There's, it's like, it's like just going and buying run of the mill olive oil versus like cold pressed virgin, yada, yada, mm -hmm. you know? So like, I think that buying like a grass fed, like carry gold or some kind of ghee, like you can, there is better butter than just going and buying like unsalted butter from Walmart. You know, mm -hmm. I, I prefer olive oil. I don't even really use coconut oil that often, but yeah. like. You know, oil. coconut oil is a little more mild than butter. So, it may, I mean, mm -hmm. but it's sometimes it comes down to taste. Olive oil doesn't do well in high heats. Um, there is no truth behind people think that if you heat olive oil too much, it turns into a saturated fat and becomes unhealthy. No, it just burns and tastes bad. It's yeah. a smoke point. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, it, but it yeah, goes like, from tasting great to tasting like trash. Yeah. I mean, that's all it is. But yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not disagreeing with that study, but I, I don't think yeah. it's like with the vegan study we pointed out at one point, or maybe we didn't. Um, there was a study I read one time where it was like the, there was a controlled vegan diet and then it was like, oh, and then if you've ever had McDonald's in your life, you're in the meat eaters, you know, it's yeah. like, so like there's those two diet qualities are not the same. So you can't just say that like, oh, these people are healthier when we gave them a prescribed controlled diet, uh, with high in fruits, vegetables and antioxidants. And then these people ate whatever the hell they wanted as long as it contained meat. Yeah. You know? So like. Um, I'd love to see that study redone with a high quality butter, you mm -hmm. know, a grass fed organic, blah, blah, blah. I would love to see this study done with just more. So they, um, it was 50 grams daily. I would like to see, I, I'd love to see this study with like 150 grams daily, which being that, um, that's a lot. Yeah, that, that's a ton, that's a ton, but it would make the, the slight differences there. It's like 1200 calories and fat. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah it would, would be a ton. It's not, yeah. it's not recommended. And I think that's probably why they're stuck to 50. Or, or do it with 50 ethics. and 100 and, yeah. you know, have multiple levels. Yeah. And see yeah. The Just to see um, the results a little bit bigger, a little bit clearer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the cholesterol thing. So I'm, I'm a very big believer in, I don't think that cholesterol, first off, most people have no idea what they're talking about when they talk about cholesterol. And I'm not claiming to be an expert, but even just on the base level, LDL and HDL are improperly called good and bad cholesterol. Um, they are not cholesterol. Um, very specifically, they are called HDL and LDL, which stands for high density and low density lipoprotein. They are transporters for cholesterol. Um, so once that's cleared up, cholesterol is cholesterol. There's only one type of cholesterol and it's cholesterol. Um, your body is very good actually. So there's no, there's never been any studies showing that dietary cholesterol intake, eating cholesterol changes the amount of cholesterol in your body. Um, because your body is very good at shutting off the production. Your body produces cholesterol. So when you eat it, it makes less. Um, it's, it's very good at that filtration process. Um, cholesterol is super, super necessary. It uh, is actually part of the sunlight to vitamin D conversion. It is, sunlight is converting cholesterol into vitamin D in more steps than that, but that's, it's a very pivotal part of that process. Um, so cholesterol is not bad. Cholesterol is not the enemy. Cholesterol is not evil. And it, there aren't good and bad cholesterol. So those are very different. HCL and LDL, like I said, are transporters. So I very strongly believe that Cholesterol is being kept in the limelight as this evil entity because of statin drugs. They're one of the most prescribed drugs on the planet. The point of a statin drug is to reduce cholesterol and improve heart. Um, little side story, my major professor had a, um, a brother-in-law or, or some member of his extended family went into the hospital for a heart issue. 
and his blood lipid panel was fine. And they prescribed him a statin. And they asked why. My, my professor and his wife were like, why did you give him a statin? They, and the response was, oh, because it's a heart thing. And it's like, well, but his, it, it affects cholesterol and blood lipids. Like he, his, his were in check. And they're like, yeah, but like all heart things get a statin. You know, so it almost is becoming like the lollipop you got when you went to the doctor as a little kid. Oh, you came to the doctor. Here's a statin. And um, yeah, so the, like the doctor may have also. So I've, I think I've brought this up on other podcasts. May have also been getting paid to prescribe that specific yep. statin. Most that's doctors how, are. Yeah, that's how the the pharmaceutical sales work. They get a bunch of doctors th- together. They're like, hey, you know what? Let's let's meet. Let's talk. They take them to lunch. They give them a little pamphlet. Your ethical doctors who actually care about their patients, they'll take the free food, they'll take the pamphlet, they'll throw it away on the way out. Um, but there are a lot of doctors who they take the money. Money's or enticing. There's also no problem with being paid to prescribe a medicine if the person needs the medicine. Mm-hmm. But being paid and then pres- over prescribing because the medicine is being paid to be prescribed is the problem. Yeah. You know, I don't care if a doctor takes money for prescribing a medicine as long as they're not prescribing it to take money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, a, it's a nice, like, that's a hard line to dance. Yeah, though. it is. You know, I, and, but yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I've been in favor of the medical care for, I mean, first off, we already have socialized medical care. It's just privatized. If someone goes to the hospital, they can't be refused and your health insurance goes up to pay for people that don't have health insurance. So if we just like globalized it instead of doing it in a private sector, which is where all these over prescriptions and issues come from, it would be a lot cheaper for everybody. It really would. Um, people just don't see that. Plus, I mean, we're not going to get into it. Yeah. But um, so yeah. Politics and everything. <laughs> cholesterol is like, first off, you can't just say total cholesterol. Um, and then also it's it, even this, now people are saying like, oh, it's your HDL to cholesterol ratio. Um, but I don't even think that's the total picture. So the way I like to explain it is um, cholesterol is like spackle. When you move out of your apartment and there's little nail holes and their TV was mounted and that kind of stuff, you take spackle and you rub it on the hole to fill it so that it dries and you can paint over it and it looks like there was never anything there. So cholesterol is doing that, but with your blood vessels. Your blood vessels get stressed. They get, you know, um, especially like high blood sugar. Um, I used to tell diabetic patients in the hospital, I got tired of trying to explain what carb counting was and it was just going in one ear and out the other. Um, so I would go into people's room. I'd say, look, it's not a little sugar in your blood, which is what people from the South love to call it. Um, it's just a little sugar in my blood. No. So it is syrup with shards of glass mixed in, just like shredding your insides. Uh, it's sugar is a crystal and it crystallizes, um, unlike salt, which dissolves into its ionic state, sugar stays sugar and it stays as crystals and it can shred up your blood vessels, your organs, things like that. So blood sugar is not something to play around with. Um, but so anyway, you have micro stresses and fractures that occur through use. Your, your blood is constantly being moved. Your vessels are constantly expanding and contracting. They will develop stress. It's like if you drove on a road forever and ever and ever and never came and patched it. Or even just um, the road freezing and thawing. Right. I mean, it, it's crack. use. It's, I mean, it's, it's just going to happen. Like it, it, there's stuff moving through it. Your, that, your blood is how everything transports through your body. So it's a highway that needs to be repaired. So when these repairs need to happen, cholesterol is what fills in as the spackle, as, in, as the filler. So what happens is LDL brings cholesterol to, HDL takes cholesterol from. That is how it works. LDL is seen as bad cholesterol because it has more cholesterol in it. But that is its purpose. Its purpose is to pick cholesterol from the liver or wherever it's hiding and, and being stored and take it to the site where it's needed. So the issue then now becomes, if you bring a lot of cholesterol and it brings too much, you don't put exactly enough spackle on the hole. You put a huge glob of it and then you take the tool and you smooth it flat. So uh, HDL is the smoothing. It's, it's the one that's flattening it to the shape of your blood vessel. So you have your LDL come and it brings a big glob of cholesterol. And then you have your HDL come and it clears it and makes sure it's nice and smooth. So what happens is there's a, there's a large interplay occurring where based on your blood sugar and triglyceride levels and the amount of HDL you have, 
it's not clearing away all the cholesterol fast enough and the vessel heals over that mound. So now you have a vessel wall with a mound of cholesterol underneath it. Once again, we see cholesterol as the bad guy because it's the one there. But the problem is with extra triglycerides and blood sugar, your blood is moving slower. HDL cannot get there. It doesn't have, it's like uh, driving in LA versus down, you know, a back rural country road. The traffic is very high when you have, it's almost standstill at times, which is why I referred to it as sludge blood earlier. So instead of having this free flowing super highway, you have a traffic jam. So HDL can't get there to clear it away. And that's where you have these heels or atherosclerosis, which is the vessel wall healed over or a narrowing of the artery. It is cholesterol that's there, but it's not cholesterol's fault. Cholesterol is doing its job, the rest of your body is fighting against HDL doing its job. So I think the most important thing to look at when you're talking about heart and blood vessel health and cardiovascular health is your HDL to triglyceride and blood sugar ratio. There's, no, I don't, there's not an equation out for that because any research in this direction is gonna get shut down by statin drugs. There, that, that's the problem with research is that there's sometimes the research you think or know doesn't exist because there is food politics, there is uh, drug politics that don't allow these things to be published. Um, you know, so it makes it very difficult for logical theory to actually be proven in a research setting because it's not funded, it's not going to get funded, and it's actually going to be actively funded against being published. And that's why we need to get rich and run our own studies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they'd still probably shut us down I'm I sure. mean, it's Somehow. like i argue all the time with the carbs thing like uh the usda says that the food guide pyramid was published by the usda mm -hmm. the united states department of agriculture told us that we should eat 50 percent of our diet and grains grown by the Depart department of, of agriculture, agriculture you know yeah. so like you have to think about this stuff logically but like you know, I don't think cholesterol is the enemy. I think it's, it's just part of the equation and it's being pointed at, like we said earlier, it's like, you know, you eat, you, you drink five nights a week and you eat donuts one day and people are like, oh, donuts are making me fat. It's like, it might also be that you drink every night of the week, yeah. you know? I mean, but like people just want to pick the one thing and make it the problem. Um, and that's not, it's not quite so simple. Yeah. Once again, this is, this is my theory based yeah. on the information I've read, but I well, it makes explained it to anyone that didn't say it didn't make sense or see the logic behind it. <laughs> like that makes sense too. And um, actually earlier this week, last week, something like that um, on Twitter, there's a guy that I follow uh, his handles, just Dr. Lipid. And it's all this like highly technical stuff about statin drugs, reducing um, LDL triglycerides, something that he said recently was that you can't you can't look at HDL without also looking at triglycerides, like increasing HDL without addressing issues with triglycerides is not effective. And I'm completely butchering what he said. Yeah. Um, but it was something along those lines saying that, you know, triglycerides do play a part in this that uh, it seemed like he was saying a lot of people were overlooking. Yeah. Well, and so we've used a couple of terms that people might not be familiar with. So lipid is a word for fat. Um, cholesterol is not a fat. It's not a lipid. It's, but it's part of the lipid profile. HDL and LDL are not lipids, but they're part of the lipid panel when you go and get that done. Because like this Dr. Lipid is saying, it's an interplay of all these things. It's not just, and so even triglyceride is another term for fat. So basically one fat molecule is, um, is just going to be called like some type of acid, stearic acid, omega, you know, there's different names for it. Um, a triglyceride is a glycerol molecule with three, tri like three fats attached to it. Tri, three fats, glycerol, triglyceride. Um, you know, so it's, it's, once again, it's a technical term, but it's just, an, it's, that's how fat is stored in the body and run through the blood. Um, it's typically not seen as free, free floating fatty acid chains. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think it's very important to know that it's an interplay of all these things and not just cholesterol is the bad guy, LDL is the bad guy. LDL has a job and it does it. You know, cholesterol has a job and it does it. You know, but it's, you know, I guess trying to think of an analogy off the top of my head, it's like if you 
were working in construction and your job was to bring the wood and the bricks to the site to build the house and you just keep bringing it as per ordered this is the this is what we need to build this up and then the builders can't get there they're stuck in a traffic jam or they just don't show up or there's not enough of them which is you know having low hdl or having too much triglyceride blah blah, blah. well i'm still bringing all this material and it's just building up and going bad and the house is not being built and so the, the body is not happy the customer is not happy because the builders aren't getting there and doing their job yep there you go i, yeah. I really like that i really like that sweet yeah so that's my take i know yeah. you've alluded to it a few times but <laughs> yeah and i've really been waiting for this this episode because i was like because i mean because you go you go into these things educated and very strong opinions which are also fun um so yeah you also have on the notes like healthy versus unhealthy fats so like omega-3s or was that part of i don't think there is such a thing Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that it's, it's moderation, you know, I think uh, like fats have a purpose and, you know, like we were just saying with cholesterol and stuff, like, I don't think there is, first off, I don't like the idea of calling a food healthy or unhealthy. A rotten apple is unhealthy, you know, because it is, it is not healthy. It is rotten. You know, you are healthy or unhealthy. Foods can be nutrient dense or nutrient poor, but it foods are not intrinsically healthy or unhealthy. Like I remember even somebody I worked with once was like, oh, beets are so good for you. I need to try to get them into my diet more, but I just don't really love them. And it's like, then don't eat them. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I take beetroot powder because I think it's a good supplement. And we'll talk about that in the supplement episodes, but I don't eat beets. I think they taste like earth. Like very rarely do beets Dude, taste good. I you know? love beets. See, <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of foods that I think are great and healthy and I love eating, but some people hate. You know, I think kale sucks. I mean, it's yep. great for you. Don't be wrong. I think it's better than spinach if you need iron and don't want to eat red meat. But I think it tastes like broccoli threw up. You know, I don't, it's not good to me. Um, it, it's, so it's just too leafy and fibrous and like you got to pull the cores out of it. It's, a, it's work. I don't want to do all that. Just throw some spinach in the damn pan and call it a day. Yep. You know, so like, you know, I just trying to force foods into your diet because they're healthy. Like there's no such thing as a superfood. There's no such thing as a superfood. Like the, yeah. the, there's no healthy foods. There's no unhealthy foods. Like you can eat pizza and have abs and be healthy and whatever the hell you want to consider your moniker for being in good shape or in good condition, or you can eat, you know, nothing but salmon and still be morbidly obese. You know, I, I, like I hate watch this there. If you ever watch the uh, documentary, supersize me, you should watch a documentary called fat heads. It's where a guy did the same thing. He went to any fast food place, not just McDonald's. But he, um, he walked three days a week. That was all the exercise he got. And he made a limit where he wouldn't eat over 100 grams of carbohydrates, I think, per meal. But he had some sort of, like, limit on what he would eat. But he basically broke down, like Morgan Spurlock said, he was eating over 5,000 calories a day. Where the guy said, he, like, broke it down. He goes, if you ate McDonald's three times a day, and supersized every meal and ate the highest calorie meal. First off, they don't offer a supersize. So he said he supersized whenever they offered it to him. McDonald's did not offer it to him every time. But even if you offer, they don't supersize breakfast. And he, if you supersized both lunch and dinner and ate the highest calorie meal, the most calories you could get at McDonald's was like 4,200 or something like that. You know, so he lied about how many calories he was eating. But the guy walked three days a week and only ate fast food for 30 days and his lipid profile improved. He lost weight. You know, like it's, it's not so easy to just say like foods are healthy versus unhealthy. You know, you are healthy or unhealthy in how you approach food. Um, so I don't think fats can be healthy or unhealthy. Yeah. I think food, I mean, fats can be better or worse for you based on their nutrient density. Um, but I still don't think that's a good term. Yeah. And that's a good point about the, the approach to it. So you're healthy versus unhealthy based on how you do it. And um, off of that, that's kind of like, so it's leans along the lines of the term natural, like natural mm -hmm. sugars we brought up before. And that's, I look at it as like, if it exists, it's natural. If something was unnatural because 
the overarching nature is such a strong force, it wouldn't, it couldn't exist. It would get destroyed. So, um, well, even I, I'll so, even take it a step further. I think the things that are not un, are not natural. So I, I think I've mentioned the naturalistic fallacy, which is the belief that anything mm -hmm. natural is good. Um, medicine is not natural, but there is some really good medicine out there. You know, insulin now is no longer natural. The, the insulin we buy, it's not. It doesn't come from pigs. It's synthetic. You know, it's, we're not taking insulin from healthy people and giving it to people that need it. Like it's it's an unnatural creation of insulin. Um, you know, I think veganism is unnatural because unless you take a supplement and it's that, so B12 is only found in animal sources because it's created mostly through rumination, like cows and that kind of stuff. But it is found in like vegetarian fed eggs and stuff like that. Like you can find it, but it's only animal sources. There's no plant source of, of B12 in the world. Um, it is created by man through a bacterial processing because they are force feeding bacteria the components to create b12 and it's being created to create supplements that is how vegan b12 supplements are created so without human intervention and human creation of b12 vegans would die all vegans would die because they would have pernicious anemia and they would not get enough b12 which is vital in energy production pathways and blood cell creation so that is the definition of unnatural to me that if you didn't have a human intervention, a, a lab intervention to create this B12 for people, they would die. So, eh. Yeah, and here, here we might get the argument we were looking for, just not on fats. Um, yeah. So my argument for uh, things, really there not being a such thing as like unnatural is yes, it's created by humans that exist in nature. We are natural animals and have a natural ability to create so i would consider that a natural creation of that b12 and so here's our nice little, little yeah argument. i mean I, I i do agree with that like humans are natural and then our evolution is also natural like we have developed the minds and the ability to pre create these things but when people mean natural they mean non-human yeah yeah you know they so usually like, mean like came out of the earth or off right the depends on your so like vegans think that it's a very natural diet they're going back to nature blah blah blah. but very specifically they it couldn't exist without human intervention which is the opposite of what most people mean by natural mm -hmm. you yeah. know but I, I agree with you on the like human thing like i hate when people are like we're the only animals that consume uh dairy after infancy and it's yeah, like, we're also the we're only, also the only animals, animals that have the internet. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Well, I mean, like, don't use the internet anymore if that's your <laughs> yeah, belief. You exactly. know, like, I, I don't know what to like, tell you, but that's, you know. Like, I mean, I've never seen a horse put up drywall. <laughs> like, right, yeah, like, I mean, like, we wouldn't have houses if it weren't for Yeah, us. I've never seen a horse use a tent. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, they might stand under, like, a palm frond every now and then. Yeah, like, yeah like, I don't. Just go live underneath a tree or a cave or something and, but. Yeah. Christ. It's like yeah. the paleo diet. We'll talk about that too. We're like, oh. nobody's hunting their own meats. Like you're for yeah. Publix for your fucking food. You know, yeah. So. The paleo diet where there's like zero evidence for, we don't really know what they ate then we'll get into all that. Yeah. Um, Watch out for the new Neolithic diet coming up. It's, it's better. <laughs> Wait until like 200 years from now, they're going to be like the 21st century diet. <laughs> yeah. Like we finally figured it out at the end. Um, but so when it comes to fats, my specific focus is actually like cardiovascular disease. Um, it's, a, it's a really, so preventing cardiovascular disease is a huge passion of mine that that's actually going to be the first piece of a tattoo sleeve that I'm going to get. All right. Um, so I'm going to get like an anatomically correct heart on the shoulder and where the coronary arteries and everything are and veins and such have octopus tentacles because um, one feeling, one symptom of having a heart attack is it feels like your chest is getting squeezed. Yeah. So that's, um, that's a tattoo that I'm really excited to get. I just really cannot afford it right now. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Tattoos um, are expensive. So I think, you know, I think that's a good mission to like, you know, stay on top of. I feel like heart, like cardiovascular health is the opposite of, I mean, I think weight is an important factor in it. Like having a healthy body weight is an important factor in a lot of things. And healthy body weight does not mean having abs ripped lean, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It means maintaining, you know, 
a, a general feeling like health, health and well being, you know, like practicing balance and moderation. Um, but I think that exercise goes so much farther in blood pressure and heart than, than nutrition outside of maintaining a body weight. Um, you know, I, I don't think that eating more omega fats or whatever the hell are going to improve your cardiovascular outside of hitting and staying in a healthy body weight. Whereas constantly, I, I always get mad at like, you know, power lifters and crossfitters and stuff like that, that are just like so gung ho about hating cardio. And it's like the heart is a muscle and it's arguably the most important muscle in the body. So you need to exercise it. Yeah. And that's, you know, like 30 minutes a day is for heart health. You know, that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. 30 minutes of continuous exercise every day just and, to make sure your heart works normally. And I don't, I don't think that you can be healthy without routinely getting your heart rate up, without breathing heavy, without being uncomfortable, just because your heart is so important and blood flow is so important just to get shit everywhere. If Let's do a heart have, episode. Yeah. I mean, because oh, yeah. there's, there's a study I got to find and bring up, but basically it was, it, it was an interesting result between cigarette smoking and exercise on yeah. heart health. And it would, uh, the, the results will surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's like you, you have to, in order yeah. to, you got to get yourself uncomfortable. You got to get your blood flowing because let's take it back to the HDL with high triglycerides. The problem is your blood becomes sludge. If you're getting it moving, that HDL can get to where it needs to go quicker. Now, with cardiovascular disease, that's where the high triglycerides and high blood pressure and things like that become a risk factor because if you already have that plaque buildup in your arteries, the atherosclerosis, you're going to irritate that it's, it's skin on the inside of your blood vessels. And when that gets irritated, that's what leads to a heart attack. So don't go, if you don't exercise at all, don't just go out, go balls to the wall. Mm -hmm. Moderation, everything in moderation, slowly increase it. But really when it comes to getting your heart moving, you got to make yourself uncomfortable. Yeah. I'll reach out to Kyle too. He's a, um, exercise physiologist that I'm friends with. So yeah. I'll, I'll see if he wants to come on and do like a exercise episode. Absolutely. Um, he, he's kind of a bro, yeah. but it, it'll be fine. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's definitely a bro, Absolutely. but, he, but he's, he's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, that there will be a parental advisory warning on that one. Cause he, <laughs> uh, he, did, he has less of a filter than I do. Yeah. But yeah. So I don't That'll think there's fun. too many children listening to this. I think it might be a little over. Probably not. Everybody I know who it. listens to it is uh, college age or above. So yeah. Cool, but, man. Well, uh, yeah. My, um, my only sign off is is just don't eat like an asshole. Like, I, lay off the superfoods and that kind of stuff. Like, don't and don't push your agenda on people. I can't stand yeah. that. Like, how many vegans tell me to eat? Like, it's like, I feel like your diet is like your religion. Keep that shit to yourself. You know, have fun with it. Don't tell people how to be because that's how you are. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's different, and let them have their own journey. So yeah, uh, my sign off is really going to be like take everything in stride and keep your life, keep things in context with your life. So we're coming up into the winter season. We have a lot of people have seasonal affective disorder, which now we know clearly this is not going to be about fats, my little sign off. Um, seasonal yeah. affective disorder is something that I believe affects me, not officially diagnosed, but just as I've seen throughout the years. So with depression, you have lower health, things like weight gain, things like that, keep, that can add on to your depression and make things worse, including with how crazy this year has been, keep everything in context to your life. So if you're not quite where you want to be as far as health, for instance, I'm not, and it really gets to me some days, really keep in context what's going on. Have you had life changes? We're any universal stressors, personal stressors, you're going into new jobs, new this, that, and the other, keep things in context with yourself and be nice to yourself. It's harder than it, it's harder than it sounds. So just something. Yeah. Really and, and with holiday season and, and what Nick just said and depression, and that, like, I know it's especially tough for introverts. I'm not, I'm, I'm an, I'm definitely an extrovert. I like my time to myself and that kind of stuff, but reach out, 
like talk to people don't. And I'd say this to people all the time. Like a lot of people have this issue where they feel like they're a burden to someone because, but how many of your friends burden you with their, and it doesn't bother you, you know? So like always ask yourself, like when people do this to me, does it bother me? Does it burden me? I mean, the answer is no, then that person is someone you can reach out to, you know? So like, don't be afraid to reach out. Don't bury everything and don't keep it to yourself. Like, especially with the holiday season and that kind of stuff. Like I, I get, you know, I have seasons where I don't feel as great and I, you know, am more sensitive to things and I'm a pretty outgoing and, and eccentric guy. So, you know, I think it's important to lean on people around you. And if, if not like find a on Reddit, I mean, when I, when I lost my dad, I used Reddit. Yeah. I mean, and it was, it was alarmingly comforting and helpful finding people online to talk to even strangers. Like there is somebody out there that cares about you, even if you don't feel like it, like, you know, reach out, don't, you know, reach out to us, comment, you know, message us on Instagram. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're here for you. Yeah. And Reddit's a good thing too, because um, if you're looking for encouragement, there's a whole subreddit for encouragement. It's, there's a Reddit for everything. Yeah, there's there's literally a Reddit. It's for mostly everything. assholes. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> yeah, but there there yeah, is a subreddit out there for almost everything. If you if you need some good people, they are there on Reddit. Um, so if you if you feel like you have nobody, that's that's a good source for you. Um, like Blair said, you can reach out to us. So I'm thinking about changing my Instagram handle. It's currently high on underscore health. So H I O N underscore health. And I'm thinking about changing it to Nick Schick RD to B just to kind of get it a little bit more. I wouldn't. No, I don't like RD to B. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I've wrestled and changed my Instagram. I changed it mm -hmm. back to Zorg Industries because I I don't care about posting on Instagram that much. It's not my main. Like I don't want to be a like I we mentioned last time copy paste Instagram dietitian. Um, but I did make it a business Instagram, so I made it a business name. It's the Human Element Nutrition. Um, and it's going to stay that I'm not going to change it again, you know, just because I want it. But I think having health or nutrition or something like that is more important than having RD to be. Okay. Um, you got to think about search engine optimization, you mm -hmm. know, it, you want words to pop up, you know, so like that's true. Our your profile and stuff like RD to be. <laughs> yeah. You know, so like that's, uh, and I, you know, for me, like, that's my website, that's my business name, that's my email. So I think it should, Instagram should fall in. So the human element nutrition, uh, my website's human element nutrition.com actually just updated it, made a major update to it. It looks a thousand times better. Sweet. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there um, you go. like subscribe, click the buttons, send us links, emails, whatever, you know, ask questions. So, uh, if you listen and like it and haven't left a review, please do. Um, but yeah, so this yeah. episode is is number six, and we'll we'll figure out what next episode is going to be. I think we're maybe thinking body image for the next episode. Yeah, yeah, that's so, what kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a guest. The real Tony will be on for that one. Um, <laughs> not not the fake Tony here. No, yep. Um, so, yeah. but thank you for listening, guys. Yeah, take it easy. <laughs>